<clears throat> Good Thursday evening to you. I'm Michael Miano, and I'm one of the co-hosts here of the Preterist Power Hour, along with Edward Howell. Um, thank you for tuning in on Thursday evening. As most of you know, I'm the uh, pastor here at the Blue Point Bible Church in Blue Point, New York, as well as the director of the Power of Preterism Network, where we seek to be on the front lines of reformation and revival in regards to the reforms full preterism is bringing. So that's my uh, short introduction there. I'm going to go ahead and turn over to you, Edward, and let you uh, offer up a brief introduction, say hello to those that might be joining with us through the internet, and then we'll proceed with the rest of our show. Okay. Hello, everyone on the internet. My name is Edward Howell. I'm uh, a member of the Blue Point Bible Church, and I'm privileged to have the opportunity to co-host with Pastor Michael Miano, you know, during this Predators Power Hour and being part of this reformation. reformation. And uh, hopefully the online community, the extended family will be edified through this. Amen. Amen. Amen, brother. Well, um, yes, and I'd like to add to that a very diligent member of the Blue Point Bible Church at that. Um, you know, I always appreciate this opportunity to join with you here and, and to fellowship with you and to study with you. And to know I to know I'm studying with someone that has a, a notebook, you know. Uh, so uh, good evening to all that are tuned in and uh, part of our program tonight. Uh, if you don't mind, I'd like to just mark out a moment to go ahead and open in a word of prayer. And then we'll go ahead and proceed into uh, our preterist power hour. Mighty God, we do thank you, Lord, for the privilege of knowing you. We thank you for your truth. We thank you for the spirit, Lord, that illuminates and makes known your truth. And we pray, Lord, that our evening, our hour tonight will be glorifying to you, will be clear uh, as a goal of the, uh, the power of preterism network is to always bring forth clarity, healing, and strategy in regards to what we're teaching and doing. So, Lord, again, we lift up our night to you. We thank you for this privilege. We thank you for the venue. And we trust that the saints will be edified and you will be glorified. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So, before we get into a bit of review of our, our rather uh, exciting uh, podcast that we had last week, where we had Dr. Don K. Preston and Elvin Israel, as well as Monster Boss, what I'd like to do, Edward, is just kind of talk about preterist resources and announcements. One of my uh, my regular frustrations is that we as a preterist community do not have a sort of a go-to venue for announcement and resources. So what I'm hoping we'll do, uh, the goal of the Power of Preterism Network is to bring together networking. So um, <clears throat> for example, I would love to tell people that, for example, we do programs on Tuesday and Thursday right here online. We're a part of NCMI Live. Uh, hosted by Ward Fenley and myself, and then also uh, we, we do the Preterist Power Hour. But then there's others that do videos, and I, it would be great if we could all get on the same page of everybody doing a video every week or every day of the week. So, you know, you'd have a two, Monday night program, a Tuesday night program, Wednesday night program, and I always wondered how neat that would be to bring together our efforts and really offer up something like that. And again, this has been done before. I want to give a personal shout out to Preterist Voice, Alan Morton, uh, and his work in constantly networking and bringing together different Preterist stuff. If you've never visited New Covenant Network, uh, I encourage you to go ahead and go to Google, put in the New Covenant Network, and you'll go ahead and get a, you'll get access to a host of resources. So Edward, uh, what I wanted to open up and just kind of talk about was... Um, you know, this will be our time each week to just talk about all things preterist. Uh, so is there any announcements in regards to the preterist movement or preterism uh, and or resources that have you have come across more recently that you might want to share about? Okay, I don't know about any preterist movements, but the Ray Vandalon series that in which we're studying, I found interesting, you know, to find that the woman that touched the hem of uh, Jesus's garment, the... Uh, the, the full scenario of it. Like, first of all, the tassels that they wore on their shawl, which had, on the end of it, it had like five knots and four spaces. The five knots had re represented the five books of Moses and the four spaces, the letters of God's name, Yahweh, mm -hmm. right? And then you had the Pharisees or whoever that would wear the shawl with the, uh, with the knots, they would like swing the knots and wondering, am I the one? 
you know, and then Jesus, you know, like reprimanded them and put them in their place. But yet the woman, when she that had the issue of blood, she didn't actually touch the hem of his garment, she touched the tassel. And when she touched the tassel, that represented that she acknowledged that Jesus was the one. So through that, her faith had got her healed, mm. you know, trusting in the true one, you mm. know. So I didn't know that false picture of that one event that most people didn't fully recognize. Yeah, that's know? right. That's a beautiful story of faith. And of course, context there with the Jewish background and, and the tassel and, and much of that. So amen. And of course, that's a part of our Wednesday night Bible study that we do here at the Blue Point Bible Church, 730 on Wednesday nights. Uh, we encourage, uh, well, seven o'clock. We start yeah, seven o'clock. Seven o'clock. Uh, seven o'clock, we start and we do a time of praise and prayer. And then we begin our, our video program and our uh, study session. So I want to encourage others to join with us. And again, that was a good insight that I thought was brought out on Wednesday night, Edward. Absolutely. And um, and it, it should encourage us to always be gaining confidence. You know, and uh, be, be the desirous of not just wanting to know what we think something's about, but rather diving in and understanding the full context. So um, <clears throat> unless you have anything else you wanted to share in that regard, Edward, um, I have a couple of announcements I'd like to share. Amen, I'm done. Okay, well, this week I don't have any specific resources because obviously I did type up our blog that we'll talk about here in a moment uh, at the Power of Preterism Network's blog site, which is powerofpreterism.wordpress.com. Um, I don't have any specific studies or announcements in regards to preterism at this very moment, uh, but, uh, well, uh, resources. I do have announcements, and the announcements are that uh, two exciting announcements. Um, obviously, we've been in, this, in the midst of this pandemic for quite some time, and a lot of conferences, or all of our conferences pretty much last year, uh, were canceled. I know the Power of Preterism Network had the privilege of hosting quite a few different speakers for our um, uh, Redeem and Review uh, conference that we did online uh, during the pandemic. However, they're planning in-person conferences are coming up. So uh, the Texas Preterist Conference is being planned for the month of September. So TJ Smith and others are putting that together. So that look for more information on that. Of course, I'll make sure uh, through the Power of Preterism Network's blog, as well as through these Preterist Power Hours, we'll keep you abreast uh, to all the information in regards to conferences being planned. And also, uh, here at the Blue Point Bible Church, starting next month, March, we're going to begin planning for our annual Bible conference in the month of October. So uh, that's something you want to keep your eyes on. Uh, of course, uh, we'll be working on which, which guests, which topics, which theme uh, we'll be looking at in regards to preterism. Uh, so again, two exciting announcements in regards to September and October. Uh, I have nothing that I, I know of right here at that this moment. But again, part of my goal was just to mark out this time that each week we would have that privilege. And again, if anybody else that tunes into our program and wants to be a part of our sessions, uh, if you know of any announcements or anything that you want us to be bringing up, uh, please either get in touch with us so that you could come on here and share with us or um, just let us know through email. Uh, you could email me at pastormikemiano at yahoo.com. I'll go ahead and allow Edward, Edward to share his contact information here in a moment. You can simply email me at pastormikemiano at yahoo.com or message me on Facebook uh, and I'll be sure to uh, read your message and get back to you as soon as I can. Edward, would you like to go ahead and share any uh, in contact information if people want to get in, hold, get in touch with you, share anything with you, maybe send you a question or a comment? Sure. I, I just basically have an email of 15281969 lowercase h o at gmail.com. Can you go ahead and repeat that one more time? 15281969 h o at gmail.com. Gmail.com. One of these days, we might work on getting you another email if you so choose. That will be easier for you to say and uh, for people to possibly memorize. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. So, Edward, uh, did you have a chance to? I, well, I know you did. You had a chance to review the blog that I wrote up that's available at the Power of Preterism blog, blog site there. And uh, yeah. what's the thing? Again, it was all about our spring feast review uh, with Dr. Don K. Preston, Elvin Israel, 
and Monster Boss. So what things stood out to you? What things do you think maybe we need to remember and continually highlight? Well, <clears throat> um, the connection of the new Jerusalem and the new heaven and the new earth uh, is related to the new covenant. Mm -hmm. Amen. That I was not fully aware of. I knew that we were living in the, the kingdom, the new heavens and the new earth, and the new Jerusalem, but I didn't connect it to, you know, that, you know, it's the new covenant, mm -hmm. you know, which should be obvious, <laughs> but sometimes the basic obviousness slips through our, you know, fingers and sure. we need to recognize. Mm -hmm. Yes. And the other thing was the Afikomen, uh, if I'm correct, it, it, it's, it's what comes after. Mm -hmm. Is that true? Yes. That which comes after. That's what it means. That which comes after. Yes. And there's other things that, you know, that I found interesting, but I'll, I'll let you bring it out and then maybe I can maybe respond to, you know. All right. Well, I'll tell you, uh, with the Afi Komen, that was something that I actually, I, I talk about the Afi Komen often and I've written about it, but what ne never stood out to me the way it did when Don Preston shared about it was what the word actually, what it actually means, uh, that it, it meant uh, that which comes after. And I didn't realize until he said that, wow, that brings a great connection to what I was saying with, you know, first Peter chapter one, and that the re revelation of the mystery uh, that the prophets longed for. And because again, what we're saying is, is, so the prophets lived in their time, and they hoped for a hope that would be revealed at the time after, right, the latter days, the last days. So the Afi Komen representing a mystery represents the mystery that was being revealed, the mystery that was being hoped for, that the mystery of salvation that the Apostle Peter is speaking about there in 1 Peter chapter 1. So I agree with you. I thought the Afi Komen conversation was rather edifying. Um, you know, in regards to the blog, I'll say that, um, well, I, I mean, I really felt, one thing that I really felt as we were going through the program was that we definitely need to have some future shows. We definitely need to talk about some of these things more than the allotted five minutes that each guest was having for those topics. For example, I just wrote these down earlier today. So I'd like to have at the end of our time going through the feast, I'd like to have Dr. Don K. Preston join us for at least two more shows. And uh, what I'll be hoping for is that me and you decide that we'll bring him on one week and maybe even two weeks or maybe three weeks, however long we feel we need to exhaust that study. But again, remembering it's an hour every week and we need time to share announcements and thoughts. But um, he talked about the 70 weeks of Daniel, Daniel chapter nine, and how it relates to the feasts of the Lord. So as me and you, as we've talked about a bit at church, um, we know that Daniel nine talks about the abomination of desolation. Uh, Daniel nine talks about um, the cutting off of the Messiah. Uh, Daniel 9 talks about the end of sin. Um, you know, it, it highlights a lot of this. And Don had said that you see the feast of the Lord all through the fulfillment of the 70 weeks of Daniel chapter 9. So that's not a study that I've been privy to. So I think that that would be something that people would be edified by. Uh, and if we unpacked it for a particular program. Another thing that stood out to me was when he mentioned the feast in Joel and John. And you see how I did that there was, I think the feast in Joel and John almost rolls off your tongue as a good title for a program. So I would love to have Don also join us and talk through that topic as well for one of our sessions. And of course, all of these will be added to our ongoing resource list regarding the feasts of the Lord. So I think those would be great topics. And then uh, with Elvin, we know that Elvin's going through the feasts of the Lord on his own. And I made that known in the blog. I shared all three of his episodes that he's done uh, in regards to the Feast of the Lord. And of course, the encouragement with that is that we would encourage people to keep watching his videos as well as ours. And then hopefully that uh, at the end of our sessions, we'll be able to kind of come together, reason together and share our different thoughts, just as we did the other day in regards to the Spring Feast. But now we'll have more moving forward. So that was really, you know, really for me, it was just, I felt like there was so much information that was shared that it, it really opened up the door for a necessary 
next couple podcasts in that regard. Not necessarily pertaining to the spring feast, but more so pertaining to the um, to the feasts in general, and and really re- wanting to review and maybe eschatological the eschatology of the feasts uh, that we're seeing. As obviously we're going to talk about here in a moment uh, when we look at the fall feasts. That's what we're going to be talking about. We're going to be leaning in on the eschatology. We've really been just kind of getting into the very basics because what we've uncovered, majority of Christians would agree with, whether they're futurist or preterist. It's really when we start to look at the fall feasts where distinction and division comes in. So that's that's kind of where I'm at with the um, with our, our session regarding the spring feast and the blog that was provided. I felt that it gives you a good soundboard to uh, build up your further studies and to see where you want to go in your in the direction of studying out the feasts of the Lord. So that being said, uh, Edward, I know that you're going to have to leave us here in a moment and go check on your food, correct? Yes. Okay. And how long do you think that'll be? Okay. If I move at a good clip, I say 10 minutes, maybe 15. Okay. Well, I'm going to try to run this by you in three minutes. I want you to try to think about it as you go about doing your work. Okay. Yes. So this, somebody had responded to last week's session, and this is what he said to us. He said, I'm glad you guys are talking about and discussing the spring feasts because it was during the feast of weeks. That's the feast of Pentecost. that Paul commanded the church at Corinth to lay by in store, which was on the first Sabbath day out of the seven Sabbaths that they counted to reach the Pentecost year each year. And both the Sabbath and Pentecost are in the context of 1 Corinthians 6, 2 and 8, which Leviticus 23, 15, and we'll take a look at some of these verses here, and was also the same day Paul preached on in Acts chapter 20, verse 7, which was also during the Feast of Weeks. See Acts chapter 20, verses 5 and 16. At best, it was a command to lay by in store once a year in the spring for the famine that Jerusalem was going through at the time, but many in the Church of Christ and among many Christian churches falsely misinterpret this for the first day of the week, as far back as the early church fathers, but that was not the meaning, just trying to set the record straight. So now I'll qualify that real quickly. What he's saying is that I guess the the church, when they talk about laying by in store, which sounds like tithing, Mm -hmm. that they say that this needs to be done on the Sabbath. And he's highlighting here that rather than this being the first day of the week, this was actually a ritual that was done in regards to the set, the Sabbath that was by Pentecost. Mm -hmm. And uh, again, I know you have to go here. He, I asked him to further elaborate, which I'm going to elaborate here. And Edward, if uh, you come back and we're, we're getting close to the end of the program, then what I would encourage you to do is just review the program. And just review the end of this program. And, um, and then me and you can maybe pick up on this next week. Yes, I'll do okay. that. Yes. Okay. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you. God willing. A couple minutes. Okay. Well, being that Edward uh, had to step away, I'm just going to go ahead and um, and bring us into the the rest of what I wanted to share this evening. Uh, and I want to kind of go through this point and maybe better understand what it is that this gentleman was getting at. I'm trying to uh, fix my screen here, but it doesn't seem that that's going to be the case. Okay, so I asked, then I asked this gentleman to uh, further elaborate on what his point was in this regard. Now, again, what I wanna do here in a moment is I'm gonna take us back and we're gonna look at some of the verses that were mentioned there. He said, I said, please elaborate. And he said, the point is that the early church fathers misunderstood someone else's story and had assumed that since this phrase here that uh, is talking about laying by in store uh, is mia ton sabaton, uh, that this is found elsewhere in the Gospels, John 20 and 1, 
was after a weekly Sabbath day, it was a Hebrew idiom, used to describe the Hebrew first day of the week, yet two things come to mind. The so-called idiom doesn't appear before the New Testament, and the Hebrews called their first day of the week, day one, as far back as Genesis chapter one. And most importantly, we are also dealing with another context of Passover to Pentecost in John 21 and John tw chapter 20, verse one. And this day appears not only, not after a weekly Sabbath, but an annual Sabbath, that occurred on a different day of the week. See John chapter 19, verse 31. Even W.E. Vines admitted translating these words as occurring after a weekly Sabbath, not considering the annual Sabbaths. And then he went on to ask me, doesn't it bother you that these were Sabbaths and not Sundays and that all Sabbaths were fulfilled in AD 70? The fact that these words were misapplied has caused the Christian day of worship to be primarily on a Sunday instead of a Sabbath which you and other Christians today observe based on false understanding of the biblical examples that were examples of Sabbath day for gatherings by first Christians, not Sundays. This should bother any honest person who is seeking the biblical truth. And then he said, could you please answer my question above knowing the truth about Acts chapter 20, verse seven and first Corinthians six, two and John 20, verse one, which were all Saturdays, not Sundays. And were all fulfilled in AD 70. Christianity is out of step with Israel's story these days were not our examples. If they were, we would be keeping the law and its Sabbaths. And he told me to think on that. So now I finally got it as I read through it a couple of times. Um, what I want to do is let's go ahead and just take a look at some of the texts that are mentioned here. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 16. And again, the reason why I'm doing this is I want to give encouragement to anybody that tunes into our sessions, that if we say something that you feel uh, that brings out a, a point, or if we say something that you feel you want to uh, contest or comment on, uh, please either message me, comment on one of my posts, uh, email me, however you'd like to get in touch with me, and I'd love to interact with your point. So that's what I'm doing here is I'm interacting with the point of somebody that clearly was willing to listen to our session, and uh, or at least comment that on the session that was posted. First Corinthians chapter 16, verse two, upon the first day of the week, and I'm imagining this is that phrase, miaton sabaton, uh, let every one of you lay by in store as God has prospered him, that there be no gatherings when I come. So we're saying here that the first day of the week is the, um, I guess the Sabbath, um, lay by, Paul commanded the church of Corinth to lay by in store on Miaton Sabaton, the first day of the week, which was the first Sabbath day out of the seven Sabbaths that they counted to reach Pentecost each year. I'm going to go ahead and take a look at Acts chapter 20, verse 7, because really what I'm, you know, if I'm going to be very transparent, as I'm looking at this and reading this and understanding this question, it sounds like we're making a mountain out of a molehill. Because again, one thing that's going to come to mind is when we do talk about the Sabbaths, etc. In the book of Colossians, Colossians chapter two, the apostle Paul says, let no one judge you in regards to your observance of the Sabbath day. So the Christian church is not necessarily uh, calling Sunday the Sabbath, nor disregarding the Sabbath of the Jews or any of that, but rather taking into consideration the fact that we do not need to worry about the, those details. And again, uh, hit the way that history has played out, maybe that was a part of the early church's decision. Uh, that maybe they were confused about what this meant. Uh, I know that there has been argument about uh, what the first day of the week was in the, in the book of Acts, et cetera. And that, that seems to be what this argument is leading in on. Um, so maybe they were confused, but again, now it's just more convenient and, and it doesn't bother me. And I don't believe it should bother any honest uh, believer because again, as it says in Colossians that the, these things were shadows pointing to uh, Christ. You know, so it's important to understand the shadow, yes, but to, to worry about what day Christians are worshiping on just again, seems to be making mountains out of molehills. But uh, here we are in Acts chapter 20, verse seven. And upon the first day of the week, when the disciples came together to break bread, Paul preached to them, ready to depart on the morrow, and continued his speech until midnight. So yeah, this seems to be making that, that same argument. Um, the first day of the week, I guess, was a, a Sabbath. Um, I had mentioned to this gentleman that he could call in. Uh, I 
not aware that he had messaged me that he can get the information. So um, I, I gave my best at this. Really, I, I don't see um, why this, this is pertinent to understand. Um, I, I do believe that the, the Sabbath is the Sabbath, but then if the Sabbath was the Sabbath, the day that the Jews rested, that wouldn't be the first day of the week, day one, that would be day seven. Um, that was the day that God rested. So yeah, that's something I guess we're going to have to put on the table for another discussion, not quite understanding how it applies to what we've been saying here about the spring feasts. Uh, that was what piqued my interest was that he had said that he was excited that we were listening to, we were going through the spring feast, and it seemed as though he was tuned into what we were saying. However, I'm not sure how that point really uh, presses against what we were saying here. So uh, unfortunately, that was one of the major points that I had marked out for our discussion. Um, I know Edward had some things that he had to go ahead and do. Uh, what I will say is that I'm going to add another resource to our blog site. Uh, we, I had been doing some research in regards to the Feast of the Lord, namely looking more into what Elvin Israel was sharing there about the Feast of Unleavened Bread and Philo and how he takes that all the way back to Adam. And uh, as I was doing some review, I found some good websites. I found a website, uh, I've been visited this website for reformed material before, monergism.com. If you go to monergism.com, that's M-O-N-E-R-G-I-S-M.com backslash feasts dash end dash festivals dash Israel, <laughs> long title, don't worry, I'll go ahead and share it at the top of our, uh, our blog site there so you can get that resource. And as I was reading through, they did say something interesting. Uh, they went through most of the feasts, which I'll be using that resource uh, in weeks to come to talk about the uh, fall feasts. Uh, Edward and I will begin looking at the Feast of Trumpets next Thursday evening. And uh, when I look at the feast, really what, uh, as it, I was going through it and going through their resource, one of the things that stood out to me was what they had to say about Passover. And they said this about Passover. Of all the feasts of Israel, the Passover is the clearest example of God's election and grace. And isn't that such a beautiful truth that when we start out the biblical story, when we see this, the, be, the new beginning happening there with Passover, as Dr. Don K. Preston marked out last week, that Passover being the beginning of that, that religious calendar there, um, that Passover demonstrates God choosing a people and God graciously guiding those people. And what we see is what starts at Passover begins to have renewal at Pentecost. And then we're going to look at what that renewal points to. So God chose a people, he renewed them. And then what happens as we move into the fall feasts. And that's what we're going to be doing as we look into the rest of the fall feast starting next Thursday evening. Um, and again, I'm going to be adding that resource that I just mentioned at monergism.com to our website, and I'll be sharing more from that site uh, and the details they have to say about the fall feasts in uh, days to come. So um, unfortunately, I don't have too much more to say uh, in regards to the Feast of the Lord at this very moment. I'm going to go ahead and just double check that nobody's made any pertinent comments on our video that we had shared, and um, then we will go ahead and end our program for the evening. Amen. I see Monster Boss had shared on uh, the video that, uh, you know, what we were talking about is an eternal Sabbath. And amen, that eternal Sabbath is found in Jesus Christ. So uh, perfectly, we, we see that that's the truth of the matter, what the Sabbath was pointing to, rather than a wrangling and arguing about what day the church needs to be gathering, uh, etc. So uh, amen to that. Um, Perfectly, we'll hear more about that in times to come, uh, the eternal Sabbath, amen, that's a part of the feast of the Lord indeed, and uh, I imagine we'll continue to be edified, so thank you all for tuning in tonight, uh, I'll go ahead and just end with a quick blessing, and I trust that, uh, I know this was a shorter session than usual, this was the, the half hour, uh, well, so that would be the preterist half hour of power, um, <laughs> so, um, but thank you again for taking some time out of your evening to join with me, uh, may the Peace of the Lord Christ go with you wherever he may send you. May he guide you through the wilderness, protect you through the storm. May he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders that he has shown you. May he bring you home rejoicing once again into our doors. Go in peace. God bless.